Hey everybody, it's David Bott here from Outside Our Bubble, and I'm coming to you with a little update on my um, Wi-Fi system and on our motor coach, more particularly our 4G data um, setup. And what I'm referring to is you notice up here now, probably already, these three WeBoost antenna amplifiers. That's right, three. These are the 4G, the Drive 4GX boosters. And um, what they are doing here is they are powering these three jetpacks. Uh, many of you know that we travel and the road and we give full live chats as we travel down the road. And a lot of people have asked us, you know, how do we keep that connectivity so good as we're going down the road? Well, by using boosters. And we used to only just use one booster. But now um, I decided I wanted to run a test and actually boost each jetpack individually directly to the antenna uh, and amplifier of, of the WeBoost 4 uh, GX. Now, what does that mean? That means there is a high level of input signal going into these jetpacks. Each one of these jetpacks is MIMO capable. They can talk to two different frequencies on a cell phone tower at the same time, giving you higher throughput. Now, not all cell towers um, support that and not all of them support it all the time. So it's a hit and miss if you get to use MIMO or not, depending on where you are, your location, the tower you're on, the congestion, things like that. But if you're able to use for MIMO, MIMO multi-in, multi-out, 4G, then that's a great thing. And why not do it boosting it? So what I ended up doing here is right now these three WeBoosts are disconnected. And so I have the three jetpacks here and I'm gonna come over here to my, to my VPN bonding system and I'm gonna run a speed test right now as I'm talking to you. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna run a speed test across each one of these jetpacks individually, and then it's gonna run a combined speed test of all of them at the same time. It takes a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that just run. So, in any case, while that's happening, I'll explain what's going on right now. As, as you see this here, these jetpacks are right now, they're just using um, their internal antennas at this point. So I have these jetpacks, the boosters are off, um, so they're using their internal antennas. And what we're gonna do is see how much of a gain we get in speed by using external antennas going through the, the WeBoost Drive 4GX and then directly hardwiring that into the antenna ports of the jetpacks. And so what happens is the signal comes down from the antenna, goes into the WeBoost, gets amplified out of the WeBoost, goes into a, a splitter, uh, which then allows me to go uh, multi-in, multi-out. And what I ended up doing was, is each of the splitters off of these two jetpacks, which are feeding these two, uh, excuse me, these two boosters, which are feeding these two jetpacks, what that is doing, what I'm doing is, is off of this booster, one, in, one antenna, uh, the driver side, one antenna goes into this input and one antenna goes into this input. And then on the other one, one antenna uh, on the drive passenger side, one antenna goes into this side and one antenna goes to the other side. So I'm splitting the two antennas between the two different inputs of the jetpack because it's, it's looking for two different antennas to be used. So that's why I did that. Using the splitter, I do lose um, throughput, excuse me, I do lose RF gain because whenever you split a signal, then you you drop in in in, in um, the quality of the signal the D, the dBs drop so I'm not too concerned about that because I'm amplifying that signal as it is before it actually goes out the output so that to me uh, I'm not too worried about the signal loss so in any case um, let's see what we got over here now so right now and I'll take a picture of this on my phone be right back. I'll take a picture of it so I can put it up on the on the on the screen. Um, there we go. What did I end up getting on my first AT? I got two AT and Ts and one Verizon. What I ended up getting was four meg, uh, nine point four down, fourteen megs up on AT and T. Verizon only gave me four hundred and ninety two KB down, with three hundred and seventy four up, and then AT and T number two gave me 3.4 down and 76 KB up. I'm not in a really good location here um, for signal for, for AT&T or Verizon, obviously, but I, on my AT&T jetpack number one, I did get a, get a, a much better signal. 
combined the uh, the VPN booster, the VPN bonding, excuse me, made that actually come out with the three jetpacks to be 12.4 down and 17 up. So you can see the VPN bonding really works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to activate these three boosters. And we're going to see what happens to the signal. Um, and we're going to see what happens to the data speeds, I should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here and I'm going to reset each of these jetpacks just so they will be able to get um, the most, uh, they'll be able to reconnect using the boosted signal because the cell phone tower may decide to change what, it, what it's looking at based on the signal strength and what frequency it's using. So in order to be sure I'm getting the best throughput, I'm just going to reset these so they'll be forced to reconnect to the cell phone towers. So I'll be right back. Just waiting for these to come back. So, at this point I should be boosted and uh, with the Wii Boost. Now once again, the two antennas on the outside, even though there's three of them here, two antennas, driver side, passenger side, are coming in from the outside and those are two 4G OTR antennas, high gain antennas. They're coming in to the amplifiers, going out of the amplifiers into a splitter. The splitter is then going one antenna to uh, driver side and passenger side, driver side and passenger side, uh, or, or you know what I mean. You, each one is getting one of the antennas on the input. Now this one over here, what's going on with this one over here is I have my internal antenna right here. This is my internal cell phone antenna and I have that split up here at a T and what happens is that comes off and goes to here for my internal cell phones and then I have one antenna plugged into port one on the jetpack of this one. Uh, so this one will not do MIMO but it is getting a boost from this booster uh, on, on antenna input number one. Okay, so that's what that's what you see going on here. So these have these are capable of doing MIMO, all of them are. But these two, if the cell phone tower that I'm connecting to supports it, I'll, I'll get it. And on these, I won't. And it, unless you really know what you're looking for, you won't know if you're actually getting that or not. So just a heads up. So in any case, I'm going to go ahead and rerun the speed test now, and we'll see what happens. Um, Hopefully that'll boost. Now, this is extreme. Understand this is this is way, way overkill. Most people won't do this. I wanted to do it because I wanted to find out if I could boost it um, directly going into the antenna inputs on the jetpacks, which I found out I can. And I'm not, and I didn't, at least at this point, destroy the jetpacks. I didn't burn anything out. I didn't fry anything. So that's good. Um, and the question becomes is, how much of a gain am I going to get? And any gain at this point would obviously be a positive gain because the, the signals were pretty, the, the data throughput was pretty slow to begin with. So um, this is extreme because these things at the time, and they have lowered the price recently. WeBoost has now come out with a different pricing screen, by the way. Um, these were $500 a piece at the time. And but data to me is extremely important on the road and we can't live without data. And so I'm doing this, A, because I wanted to see if I could do it. And two, because, well, we rely on data a lot. And um, not that any of you would do this. However, if you do have a Wii Boost, there is nothing to say. You could not split that signal coming out of there and go into input one on your jetpack directly as I am. And that those are uh, TS9 connectors that are on the on the on the bottom of these. They're they're SMA connectors um, and TS9 connectors, and you can buy those on Amazon um, to do the splitting and what have you. So in any case, coming back, let's see what we got now. And I can already see we have a great improvement, and I'll take a picture of it too when it's done. So what we ended up with right now is you ready for this? Jetpack 1, 15.2, Verizon, 17.9 down, excuse me, 15.2 down, 9.9 .9 up, Verizon 1, 17.9 uh, down, that used to be below a meg before, and 19.8 and up, and then Jetpack number 2, AT&T, which was low also, I'm now at 34.5 down and 10.1 up. So 
huge increases in data. And based on that 34 result, I'm pretty sure that AT&T Jetpack number two here is getting MIMO because that's pretty good speed. Um, combined now, I'm getting 47.9 megabits down and 28.3 megabits up. So we have a before and an after. So we can surely see that by using boosters directly connected to your jetpacks, directly connected by an antenna input, can greatly enhance your throughput of your devices. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's really cool. I mean, we did a really big speed increase by doing that. So I'm excited about this. And not that I would expect anybody to do this because like I said, these, are 50, these, are, these at the time were $500 a piece. But if you do have a WeBoost system or you're wondering how you can get best, your best data on the road, then consider about looking into how you would connect your WeBoost directly to your jetpack. And you may just see performance increases like this. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I just wanted to do this uh, for you guys to show you it can be done and, um, and that you shouldn't blow anything up if you do try to do it. And it really shows you the, the throughput that happens um, based on my results. So I'm Dave Bott from OutsiderBubble.com. And if you like what we do, please click subscribe. We do really appreciate each and every one of you. And I know we don't bring you a lot of content all the time. It's because we don't really do this for a living. We just do it when we have something to say or if we find something that might be helpful to our fellow RVer or coach owners. In any case, Dave Bott, Outside Our Bubble. Take care, keep safe, see you on the road. Bye! Yeah, I know. That's nuts. Later.